Hey everyone, Matt Gunn here, FlyingGiants.com at the 61st annual Toledo Week Signals Expo. And we've got Greg Popple of Team Futaba here. He's gonna talk a little bit about SBUS. Greg, tell us a little bit about the technology. I know it's been around for a while, but it seems to be making a big comeback now. And I'm very excited about what SBUS has to offer. Tell us a little bit. The biggest thing is it expands the capabilities of a radio. You can take a, a six to eight channel radio and make it a 14 channel radio. You can take a standard servo and make it SBUS. That flexibility opens up a whole new world to everybody. And then uh, tell us a little bit about the wiring aspect of it. Now I know in a traditional system you've got servo leads running back yeah. and forth, especially uh, in multiple servo uh, control surfaces. What does the SBUS platform do to mitigate some of the wiring clutter? The amazing thing is when you open up your train, open up the airplane and start looking in and you see one wire coming off the receiver. So we're running one wire all the way back to the end of the airplane, plugging them in to the rudder and elevator, and that's all you have. Thank you so much for explaining a little bit about it, and we're glad that Futaba has decided to make SBUS a comeback in 2015. For everybody. Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham on the floor of Toledo 2015 with Aaron Favitt of Hobby Co. How are you doing? Are you ready for the big show? I'm very excited for my first Toledo. This is a very exciting morning for me. <laughs> this uh, emptiness that you see and feel will not it will not be like this in a matter of moments. I'm sure. I've heard it. Uh, it's going to get wild, so I'm excited. <laughs> so what's on the floor today that you feel like uh, we should talk about first? Well, we've got the uh, new P-47 Razorback. It's a very cool um, aircraft. We've got the X-4 Pro, our new quad. Um, that has got some amazing features. We've got the new Cajun Commander. It's um, an. Ooh, yeah, we know about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome airboat that uh, it's got some pretty cool 3D printable files so you can download or so you can you can have extra files printed for your boat. I'm going to interrupt you for yeah. some of the guys in our car section. You know, we've been having contests, and I don't believe that we have uh, put the, the Commander up yet. Is that. We haven't offered that as a contest yet. I think that thing would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, way to put me on the spot, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, definitely put that up for, for a giveaway. I think that would be awesome. Well, I wanted to say that everyone at RC Groups and FG, Flying Giants, are excited to have you on board. I know we've been doing a lot together and getting some contests out and a lot of other things. And that's kind of a, it's not only good for the companies and the planes, but it's great for the hobbyists out there who can get their hands on some of your equipment. So... Thank absolutely. you very much. Well, absolutely. We're happy to do it. And yeah, we're, de we're planning all sorts of giveaways throughout the year. So uh, stay tuned for some more fun giveaways. Aaron Favitt, and now we're going to go cruise around the Hobbit Co. area. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. RC Groups in the Horizon booth with Kim Payne. Kim, every year you guys bring all the good stuff, and occasionally you bring some new stuff. And we're going to take a tour and go talk to some of your product managers, but is there anything you want to talk about before we get going? Actually, I mean, just welcome to the 2015 Toledo Show and to our booth and some of the new products that we're going to be introducing and having the guys talk to you about. And one of the big things that we have that super exciting and it's the new emerging segment for the 250 class uh, FPV racers. So I think you guys are really kind of like that one. So we're going to jump out and go move around this booth, but before we do, Sometimes you get to go to shows, sometimes you're rearranged to other shows. Will we be seeing you at the CEF or the Joe Nall? Uh, at the Joe Nall. All right. Well, you can look forward to that, and we'll talk to you in the booth there. And now we're going to move on and check out some stuff. Thank awesome. you, Kim. Thank you. FPV racing is everywhere. It's only going to get thicker as everyone explores and uh, discovers how much fun it is. And this is a sexy little beast. What's going on? You bet. This is our new 250 racer. This has got... Uh, let's just start with the motors here. Uh, these are uh, 24, 2300 kV motors. Uh, we went with molded, out of the box, these are going to be molded motor uh, mounts here. Full carbon fiber frame, aluminum, motor, uh, aluminum arm blocks. Uh, we'll also have aluminum motor blocks as an option part too. I love those embedded LEDs. Yeah, the LEDs in the arms it make it easy to see when you're flying, racing against your buddies. Red in the back, green in the front. Yeah. This has got our speed control uh, by Castle, actually, uh, four in one. Yep, Castle's going to be doing our ESCs here. Uh, we're running an AR636 flash with quad race 
programming. So basically, uh, it's set up to fly quads. Uh, we canted the motors. If you look at the motors here, these yeah. are all canted 10 degrees forward just to add that little bit extra oomph when you're you know, flying fast forward flight. So yeah, other than that, this is working off a three cell, 11.1, 1350. We're getting around eight minutes of flight with that. How tough is this thing? Are there replacement parts for the well, accidents? You bet. We're going to have replacement parts for it. Props, motor, uh, motor mounts, of course, frame, uh, you know, up, upper frame and lower frame. Aluminum blocks will be available. So we'll have a full line of parts for it. Tell me about your prop nuts. I know when you're racing, nuts tend to uh, yeah. they, it's a yeah. problem. One thing we went with on here is uh, self-tightening nuts. So these will never loosen up. And they look good, too. Yeah, they look, they look excellent, yeah. You can also tell by uh, you know which one is which here we got black and silver so yeah all right now let's talk about that camera that's sitting on that canopy yeah the camera is a new camera it's not the VA 1100 like on the Nano QX FPV this is actually a slightly uh, powerful camera uh, more powerful camera this is 25 milliwatts so it's going to give you a lot more distance than the other other one we did previously I uh, this will grams uh, we're looking at 105 as uh, flying weight. And what about grams. on that camera? Do you know what it is? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm we'll, not sure what it. We'll look that up for you. Yeah, we'll, yeah. <laughs> but uh, 105 total flying weight. And uh, one more thing, you put the red in the back and the green in the front, which is how it should be, and no one ever does it that I way. I know. We we wanted to get it right this time, so. Awesome. That's what we went with. Well, Kobe, thanks a lot, and I'm sure we're going to see more and hear more. And if Jason Cole has anything to do with it, I guarantee one of those will be in his stable. <laughs> oh yeah, you bet. Everybody, we're talking to Seth Arnold. Seth has been in the hobby a long time. Mm -hmm. And speaking of a long time, I've got to tell you a story. When I was a kid, my grandpa used to take me to air shows. And when I say a kid, I mean like five to six years old. The only airplane that really ever spoke to me and the first airplane that I thought, I want that, which is probably why I'm here today in RC, was a Pitts mm -hmm. sitting in a hangar. And I don't know what it was about it, but it just got me. Yep. And it got a lot of other people too. So let's talk about your pits. Yeah, so this is the Ultra Micro Pits uh, from E-Flight. This is one of the projects I did uh, a little over a year ago, I think now. We uh, released it just before Ceph last year, and we've been selling them quite well for a good while. A lot of guys are really liking the airplane, but uh, 2S brushless, um, removable landing gear, AS3X, but overall just a sweetheart of an airplane, a really sweet flying airplane. Typically with an airplane like this and this size, they're pretty mean and pretty unfriendly and everything else, but... Uh, you tame it down with the... Uh internals yep tame it down a little bit with as3x that helps a lot we made some changes to the airframe too but overall we wanted a good good looking great flying sport aerobatic airplane so. it's beautiful you can put it on your desk you know it looks yep. great exactly and then what else do we have back here i see so we also also have the brand new e-flight ultra micro pt17 um this one we just announced last week right before toledo so it's beautiful Brand spanking new for the show. Um, this comes as a bind and fly, but the um, the airplane is actually based on Pat Hartness's full scale airplane, so it's the same trim scheme. If you look at the end number, it says the same end number as Pat's airplane. That's really cool. Pat Pat thankfully allowed us to do it, so pretty exciting. We get to actually share it a little bit. So um, cool airplane comes for uh, bind and fly, ninety nine dollars with a one S one fifty. Works off the same standard one S little battery we've had for quite some time now. Brush motor two-blade prop but uh, overall just a good flying little slow gentle airplane have you done the photo shoot with Pat's plane yet or is that gonna happen at Seth that'll probably I be Joan all Joan all yep yep Joan all very beautiful I would want to uh, age it out and make it look all nice and distressed yep exactly we, we always get a little excited about all of them I have a little pits with a horizon indicator and stuff on mine and everything else but it's a lot of fun to take them and customize them a little bit change them up so awesome beautiful <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with Adam Schaefer of RC Logger. He's got a couple of new products to talk about. The first is going to be the RCI Nova X. Did I say that right? That's correct. All right, so yep. tell us a little bit about it. Uh, Nova X is a, our new uh, introductory platform to the 350 uh, multi-rotor market. Um, there's a lot of cool features about Nova X. I can't go into all of them, but some of the things I do want to share is that uh, we uh, really started from the ground up. We decided to do something a little outside of the box, nothing with the plastic white frame or anything like that. Uh, our system's very modular. Uh, it's nice to work on and repair if you have crashes or stuff like that. Uh, it's very resilient. Uh, obviously, we have you know GPS, position hold. We have uh, a very, very effective altitude height hold system, uh, the best I've ever seen. Um, our return to home, 
of course, intelligent orientation control, stuff like that. We actually have different acronyms for it. We call it SMART and IRCP, uh, but the concept's still the same, so a lot of autonomy built in. We also have a really cool app called iControl, right. and it enables the user to control, like do calibration procedures, change uh, flight parameter settings. So uh, Nova X, the RTF, is shipping in the next three to four weeks. Um, and you can also get this in an ARF form, so if you already have uh, your own personal transmitter, you can just add your receiver and go fly like that too. So we're kind of a hybrid. So what type of flight times are we seeing out of the Nova X? We're running a 3S5200 milliamp and we're getting 20 minutes unloaded. Nice. So fully loaded with a gimbal, 16, 17 minutes, which is you know pretty darn good. So we have this beautiful gimbal here that's on the extreme. I know this craft very well. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, this is uh, this is brand new. This is called the X1. It's a, it's a first of its kind. It's a micro brushless gimbal for the Mobius camera, specifically designed for that. Uh, we all know Mobius, very familiar. Everybody uh, that seems to be in a multi-rotor, if they don't have a GoPro, they have a Mobius. Right. So uh, we decided we wanted to make something so people could do indoor and outdoor aerial footage. So we made this really small gimbal. Uh, it's our own controller. It's um, basically in production right now. We're expecting to have it out in the next four to six weeks. Uh, retail price is going to be between 120 nice. and 140, nice. so relatively inexpensive. The cool thing about the gimbal is, yes, it's on extreme right here, mm -hmm. but it also work with any platform. It just runs off of uh, 12, uh, 5 to 12 volts, and uh, it's a common JST plug. You plug it in. No tuning, no tweaking. That was my next question. No software no, tuning no involved. Need, but we have it firmware upgradable too. So if down the road we come up with maybe a better way to do things, the end user can plug a micro USB in, download the firmware, and, and upgrade it. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah, well, there, happy, there you have it. Some yeah. of the latest goodies from my good friend Adam at rclogger.com. Adam lives right down the street from me, by the way. Yep, yep. We're locals. So <laughs> Ohio. We to hang out and fly together. That's pretty cool. Thanks, bud. Hey, thank you, man. All right. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Take care. Hey guys, we're here with the man, the mystery, the legend, Vova Resnick of rangevideo.com. This man is single-handedly responsible for starting FPV in the United States. I know I'm playing you up a lot, but it's it's true. So tell me a little bit, Vova, about these beautiful head play goggles that you have on. Okay, so these are the goggles that will resurrect the company head play. Uh, they are a very simple, rugged design meant to made for the people, so it's a democratic FPV goggle. They fit 90% of the people, they work even if you wear glasses. They're very integrated, so they have the, the battery, the antenna, the 5.8 gigahertz receiver on all 32 channels, the HDMI input. Now so you mentioned HDMI, they are HD capable headsets. Right, so the display is 1280 by 800 pixels, uh, so they can accept a 720p uh, d input or a 1080 and they'll downscale it so that will work with a DJI Inspire it just plugs into the back of the remote um, a DJI Lightbridge or the new HD links yeah and it will display that beautiful picture very crisp and there's no visible latency there except if you have it in your transmission system now what are they made out of they're made out of EPP for the outside for the main body this is called EPP foam it's what car bumpers are made of uh, no light gets in, so it feels like you're sitting in a theater. But when you're in there and, you, and they're off, you just see nothing. And then you turn them on and you see this huge screen in front of you. Uh, they come with two different thicknesses of face padding foam, so you can adjust to fit your, your, your face and your comfort. Uh, two different lenses, depending if you're nearsighted or short, uh, farsighted. Uh, the head strap, and yeah, it comes with everything in one package. There's only one type of model, you only need to choose the color which you want. Uh, the Democratic goggles, so that's that was the goal. <laughs> there you have it, everybody. The people's goggles. <laughs> yes, the people's goggles. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, man. All right.
right, so tell us, what's the future of ReadyMade RC? We'd like to grow our business to be very big, and I'd like to get, we'd like to give back to the community. We think the future of FPV would be getting to fly further away, <laughs> higher up. I think that's a great future for us. <laughs> FAA, nope, he's just kidding.